profane in the Sabbath day by buying, selling, cooking, laborers work, contract work, work for hire. Neither should you let other people do things like that for you on the Sabbath day. You must completely cease from that, from buying and selling and cooking and cleaning. Okay? So, verse 36 again, Howbeit they answered them not, neither cast their stone at them, nor stop the places where they had hid. So it's just like shutting the door. They should have did that. But said, let us die in all our innocency. Heaven and earth shall testify for us that ye put us to death wrongfully. So they rose up against them in battle on the Sabbath and slew them with their wives and children. Mm -hmm. So these people are heartless, merciless. They don't care about us. Stop thinking that these, it's the same thing today. Stop thinking that these people care about you. Listen to us. We're not going to tell you anything wrong. It sounds brutal, and it's, it sounds far-fetched, and it sounds like, hey, see, let me tell you something. These are the same Greeks that you live among now. They changed, and they call themselves the Romans, but they true descendants of Esau. So they merged into the Roman Greco Empire, but they don't go into those labels and titles because there's so much bloodshed associated with that. There's so much bloodshed associated with that name that they don't want to go up under that banner of being the Grecians, of being the Greeks, of being the Romans. They don't want to go in there because that title right there, that's just like you in the flesh and somebody call you murder. That's your nickname, murder, because you were killed. You, you understand what I'm saying? So if you're trying to change, you got to come away from up under that proverb, that title of being called a murderer or being called murder, or, you know what I'm saying? Or you was a dope dealer, or they call you see money. Or whatever, you gotta try and come up way from under that banner because you don't want somebody to look at you like that. But I tell you, these still, they're the same people. They're the same people. And, and, and they masqueraded with the money, with the power. They ain't conquered everything, they ain't conquered everything that could be conquered. So the, bru the brutal force behind the situation is, is, is made up, you understand, it's made up um, in a different fashion now. What they want to call legally, politically, legally, we'll do it through a ladder in the mail. Legally, we'll haul you to court. They got a, it's a process that wears you out. They got other little minions that will do that, that, that dirty work, and instead of just right out killing you because they disagree or they hate you, they're going to do things like kill you slowly. Okay? What do you do when you're living in a household with people who won't listen when you tell them that it's a Sabbath? Okay? When they're cooking, it's Sabbath. Yo, Hezekiah, it's nothing that you can do when somebody else, especially if it's not your house and they're cooking on the Sabbath, don't eat the food. But on the Sabbath days, you should be trying to make it your business to come out to service. That way you're not even around that environment. But the next thing is save so that you can get your own gates. And that way you'll be able to control what happens to what happens inside of your house on the Sabbath. But I'm going to tell you something. The scriptures, Christ said that we are the light of the world. Okay? So now, being in a house where people are the profane and the silent, they just, they may be unbelievers, but they can become believers through your example. Show them how, show them how to uh, keep the Sabbath day by making your food and not kindling the fire upon the Sabbath day things like that. Show them how to do that. And you can show them how to do it by, okay, you're making your food, you're eating, you're doing this, you're doing that. And then by them being one, that's the most high, using you to warn them. The next thing you know, bam, something happens unto them, you know, they're going to come back scratching their head, wondering like, why did this thing happen? So then that gives you an opportunity to go into the commandments again. But be easy and careful on how you tell people, I told you so. Because our objective is not to have somebody close our ears up. Our objective is to have somebody to hear the scriptures. So then, you know you told them so. So you can wait on that. 
You understand? But you can show them about how they have to keep the commandments. And the Sabbath day is a commandment as well that they would have to keep. So it's a long road. And it's a lot to be done. And you got time. You just... Christ said, in your patience, possess your soul. So you got to possess your soul in patience, especially when dealing with somebody that is a non-believer. Okay, so we in 1 Maccabees, the second chapter. <coughs> and, um, yeah, verse 38. So these people, yeah, they, they destroyed themselves because they should have just shut the door, man. That's what they did. They should have they should have stopped themselves. But Christ, he straightened that out when he came and showed us and told us, you know. So when you verse 38, it says, So they rose up against him in, in battle on the Sabbath and slew him with their wives and children. So this man, he don't have no respect of persons. You got to tell your people they got to keep these commandments because if they don't, with the Lord being no respect of persons, the Most High, he will destroy you. Remember, our famous precept that everybody likes. Hosea what? 4 and 6. Hosea 4 and 6. Everybody quoted, but they don't understand. The Lord said, okay, you don't want me, I don't want you, and take your little bag, take your little baby with you. He said, I'm going to I'm gonna, I'm gonna allow your child to be destroyed. This is an example of it. Verse 39, now when Mattathias and his friends understood hereof, they mourned for them right sore. So when our people get destroyed, you should, you should feel sorry for them because they have been misled, they have been misguided, they have been miseducated. Our job is to do what? Our job is wait at the temple, wait at the altar. That's what I mean. Our job is to wait at the altar. That's our job. Your job is not to take it personal. Okay? Your job is to preach this gospel, to teach this gospel to the sinner and to the righteous. Because we are going to need correction. But once you correct that person, and once you tell it, that burden is off your hands. Your bur that burden is off your hands. Let him take that, the soul that sent it, it shall die. Once you did your job, you did your job. Okay? And we've got to learn to do that. I've been doing that since I came into the truth, but they decided to still break. So I'm moving in about two months to get away from non-service, but the water for the edification. Oh, praise you, brother. Right. Yeah, get out of there. Get out of there. Okay? So, verse 39 again. Mattathias and his friends, when they understood hereof, they mourned for them right sore. And one of them said to the other, if we all do this as our brother have done and fight not for our lives and laws against the heathen, they will now quickly root us up out of the earth. And that's what they, that's what they have done. Although they didn't destroy us as a nation, what did they destroy and corrupt? Our altars. Our altars? Our heritage. No, that's been gone there. Our name. Yeah, our name. Okay, let's go, let's get it. Uh, Psalms 83, right? And go straight to the one, go. And go straight to the point. Yeah. And said, let us cut them off, right? Mm -hmm. Psalms chapter 83 and verse 4. They have said, come, and let us cut them off from being a nation, that the name of Israel may be no more in remembrance. So it happened. So I read what I got again, and we're going to go back to 1 Maccabees 2. One of them said unto the other, If we all have done as our brethren have done, and fight not for our lives and laws, that's what we got to do. We got to fight for our lives, and we got to fight for our laws against the heathen. It says they will now quickly root us out of the earth. How do we fight for our lives? And for our laws. How do we do that? How do you fight for your lives and for your laws? How? Go ahead. Tell me. How you think? I'm telling I'm, I'm oh, waiting. So like resisting their way, so if they, if they want to the sacrifice and do stuff like that, be different. And hey, don't do what they don't do what they do. Okay. Now, Jeremiah. Twenty 
28. And verse uh, 8. Jeremiah chapter 28 and verse 8. The prophets that have been before, before me and before thee of old prophesied both against many countries and against great kingdoms of war and of evil and, and of pestilence. Right. So now, so how do we fight for our laws? For our lives and our laws by prophesying. Prophesying against these kingdoms. You understand? So now let's go to 1 Timothy 6. That's 1 Timothy 2. 1 Timothy 2. And I'll read verse 1 and 2. It says, I exhort therefore that first of all supplications, prayers, and intercessions, and giving of thanks be made for all men. So you're going to prophesy. Listen. This is how you fight for your lives and you fight for your laws in the situation that you're in. It says, that first of all, supplications, prayers. People think that prayer don't work. That's foolishness. Prayer do work. Prayer to the Most High. Because first of all, the scriptures say the, uh, the prayer of a righteous man does what? It availeth much. Do we understand that? Availeth means it profits much. So now if you're a righteous man, then the Most High going to hear your prayers. But, just like the blind man said, when he was received sight. For we know that God heard not sinners. So if you sinning, the most I ain't gonna hear your prayers, because you don't even know what to pray for. You praying for things that you want to consume upon your lust. But if you be a righteous man and you send up prayers, it says intercessions and giving of thanks. Meaning acknowledge the things that the most I have made. It be made for men, for kings. Okay, we want to hate all the kings. The, the king is a president. You want to hate all the kings. That, that's your prerogative. But as a nation, Israel as a nation needs this thing. It says, and for all that are in authority, that we may lead a quiet. When it says lead, who are the leaders in Israel? The people that teach and preach this gospel. So now we need to lead a quiet and peaceable life. So you pray to the Most High that the Most High will give these people the spirit to allow you to lead. You understand? To keep you out of harm's way when you prophesy. That's how you stand up for your laws and for, the, for your lies and your laws. Now, to what you can prophesy and ain't nothing going to happen unto you. But you got to know how to prophesy. You got to know what you're doing. You got to know what you're saying. You got to stand out there and let the white man know he's the devil. You already know he's bad. You're supposed to be teaching repentance. You're supposed to be teaching nationality. You're supposed to be teaching grace. You're supposed to be teaching mercy. You're supposed to be teaching truth. You don't have to make the doctrine about the white man as the devil. That's going to get you killed. That's going to that, that's gonna offend the powers that be. And the powers that be, then, hey, he going to feel that you're a resistance, man. He going to be like you and you. You is inciting what they call that uh, uh, a racial yeah, racial tension. Racial, ten racial tension. They gonna say you inciting that. The scriptures itself has force. Let that water, let the force of the scriptures do the work. You don't, you don't have to do that. Okay. So now let's go back to, back to Maccabees. First Maccabees. Forty one. Yeah. At that time, therefore, they decreed, saying, Whosoever shall come to make battle with us on the Sabbath, we will fight for our, we will fight against them. Neither will we all die. Neither will we die all, as our brothers that were murdered in the secret places, meaning places that they had tried to hide. Okay? Go ahead. Verse 42. Then came there unto him a company of Assyrians, 
who were mighty men of Israel. Right, so men from the tribe of Asher. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. Even all such as were voluntarily devoted unto the law. Also all they that fled for persecution joined themselves unto them and were a stay unto them. So it says, verse 43, it says, Also all they that fled for persecution joined themselves unto them. What brought, at this time, what brought Israel together, somewhat together? Mm. Yeah. Persecution. Persecution. Does it does it take persecution to bring Israel together? It shouldn't. But that's what that just said. Okay. Huh? What what is it? Okay. Read on. Verse forty four. So they joined their forces and smote sinful men in their anger. So they joined their forces. At that time, what happened? Israel joined together. We be wanting to join together. We be wanting to join together. But sometimes we can't. Because we get, we get caught up on labels and titles and words and pronunciations and colors and cities and grudges. Yeah, the northern kingdom is envious of the southern kingdom. The southern kingdom is envious of the northern kingdom. Let this tribulation and persecution come. You're going to need each other. Yeah, you're going to need each other. Because everybody else, they're going to be a part of the world. And they snitches. <laughs> That's right. And they snitches. They ain't going to care about you. The only person that you're going to be able to trust is another Hebrew. Go ahead. And wicked men in their wrath. Start from the top. Verse 44, so, the, so they joined their forces and smote sinful men in their anger and wicked men in their wrath. But the rest fled to the heathen for support. You see that? So the rest fled to the heathen. That's an awful thing when we have to run to the heathens for safety. You think that the white man got the answer? Oh, he, he got the answer. He's going to protect me. He's clean cut. He's, he talks with a proper grammar. He's dressed and suited and booted. So you think that that is the, and you feel that the enemy of your enemy is your friend. <laughs> Israel boy, you better wake up. You better wake up. You better wake up, man. <coughs> it ain't no, it ain't, it ain't, it ain't no good white people. Not one. Not one. If they if they doing something, you need to take that, that that's the most high, giving them the spirit to do something. But for you to just run and say, oh well this this one here, they ain't never did nothing. He is good. The scripture say there is none good but one, that is God. Mm. Alright? Let it be them or you and see who they give up. Yeah. They ain't gonna walk out there for you, man. Go ahead. Verse 45. Then Mattathias and his friends went round about and pulled down the altars. And what children soever they found within the coast of Israel uncircumcised, those they circumcised valiantly. So remember, so if Mattathias pulled, if he went about and pulled down the altars, where was those altars at? Mm. Where were they at? In the city. Where were they at? They were everywhere. Right. They were everywhere. In the middle of the streets. They were everywhere. Because these heathens wanted to make sure that you stop doing what you were doing. Remember, they set up rows. Yeah, they set up roads. They set up and chapels. They built them everywhere. It's the same thing that you see now. Baptist church right next to each other. Cross the street from each other. You get one block, excuse me, you can have one block which will consist of maybe 